Okay, so anatomy of the, of the masseter muscle uh, and how we can relate that to our injection practice with toxin. So, uh, so the masseter can really, you know, should really be considered uh, both in a 2D and a 3D capacity in order to consider all the facets of what we need to understand when we're injecting the masseter. So, I mean, practically, wh why do we treat the masseter with toxin? So we do it predominantly from an aesthetic perspective to essentially make the muscles smaller and give this narrowing or slimming effect, particularly with female patients from uh, the anterior view. And so when we look at the masseter from a 2D perspective, first of all, I mean, so it is a, it is a large muscle, uh, relatively speaking, of um, mastication or of chewing. Its origin is the inferior border of the zygomatic arch, and it pretty much, you know, kind of expands the entire uh, distance of the arch, so kind of running from, uh, you know, the most anterior portion of the arch right across to the posterior portion. And then heads down, um, you know, pretty much in a straight line, as it were, either side of that before inserting onto the lateral portion of the body of the mandible and the region of the angle of the mandible. So those are really uh, sort of the key 2D dimensions that we need to be aware of. So um, in terms of length, you know, so how long is the master really from kind of superior to inferior? So when you look at, um, ultrasound studies, um, this length, so really from arch to mandible, um, is somewhere between four and six centimeters. So it tends to be a little bit more on average in men, a little bit less in women. So kind of four to six centimeters. Then from um, anterior to posterior, so basically you know, how wide um, is the masseter in that kind of 2D dimension? It's somewhere between three and five centimeters when you look at the uh, ultrasound uh, studies on the width of the masseter. So then the other thing that we need to think about in terms of the masseter, really from a 3D perspective, is how thick it is. So if you imagine, you know, how, how thick is the masseter if you think about its relationship to the skin, and then how thick it is really from the, from the skin, as it were, right to its kind of most uh, sort of medial position uh, in terms of thickness, uh, and, and, and that relationship really to um, the mandible as well. So uh, when we look at the ultrasound studies again, you know, how thick the man, the masseter is, uh, really is um, different in men and women, number one, and also different in terms of its, uh, how thick it is in its relaxed state and how thick it is in its contracted state. And this is important because this is going to aid us in, um, allowing us to decide how long a needle do I need to be able to reach the deeper fibers of the master, which is important in terms of preventing um, the, the, the very specific complication of this paradoxical bulging of the master. So we must be able to reach the deepest portion. So in the relaxed state, the thickness of the masseter uh, in a woman is somewhere between one to one and a half centimeters. In a man, it's somewhere between 1.2 to two centimeters. When you look at these ultrasound studies, the references to which I'll put below. And then in the contracted state, so when a person is clenching, how thick is the masseter? So it changes. So in, um, in women in the contracted state, the thickness of the masseter is somewhere between one and a half and three centimeters. And in men, it's pretty much the same, slightly more, one and a half to roughly 3.2 centimeters on average when you look at the available uh, ultrasound studies looking at the thickness of the masseter. Okay, so if we know the average thicknesses of the masseter and we know that we need to reach the deeper fibers um, and it's really the contracted thickness that's important because remember that when we're injecting the masseter we often ask our patients to clench them back down to allow us to palpate exactly where it is and personally i tend to inject it in the contracted state so you know when, when we look at the average thicknesses we need to reach the deeper portions of the masseter you know roughly one and a half to three centimeters um, in terms of the thickness in the contracted state approximately in men and women what that tells me is that you know we need a needle that's at least 18 millimeters to 25 millimeters in, in thickness. And these are the, the typical length of needles which are available. So 18 millimeters may being three quarter inch needles and 25 millimeters being one inch needles. So we really need that in terms of length to be able to adequately get 
towards the deeper fibers of the masseter. Any shorter than that, so the classic half inch needles or even shorter than that are just not going to get into those deep fibers and we're going to be running the risk of this paradoxical bulging of the masseter, one of the complications that we really want to avoid. So when we then move on to think about the other um, anatomical considerations of this area in terms of injecting, so remember superficial to the masseter muscle is the parotid gland. So the extent of the parotid gland um, is so variable uh, person to person. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to see uh, resections of the parotid for typically for cancer surgery and things like that. And, and the variation in the, in the extent of the parotid in terms of how much or how little it covers the masseter is so variable person to person, but it always runs superficially. And we really don't want toxin to be injected into the parotid uh, in, in someone who has normal parotid function because you can, you can disrupt the um, secretion of saliva and that's not something we want to do. So deep injections uh, are important in order to avoid that potential complication as well. Probably beyond that, the most important uh, kind of regional anatomy in terms of the master avoiding complications is really the anterior border. So the muscles of facial expression um, that are in close proximity to the masseter anteriorly. So very specifically risorius and then the zygomaticus muscles are ones that we want to avoid. So it's really important that we palpate for the anterior border of the masseter and we give ourselves a margin of safety. So typically a, a centimeter posterior to the anterior border in order to avoid inadvertent injection of risorius and zygomaticus, which if we, if we do have an effect on those, we're gonna get this asymmetrical smile, which is just a very unpleasant uh, complication for our patients. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, hit like, subscribe, and share to see a bit more.